Under the mobile serve offer, this video is a piece of the on-the-job training curriculum for integrated lubricant services. The goal is to enable you to convert customer needs and opportunities around these activities into improvements in safety, environmental impacts, and productivity. The video is the first part of the OJT curriculum. After viewing it, you should job shadow a competent person conducting integrated lubricant services. Then have the competent person observe and coach you as you complete a service project. The OJT Participants Guide provides an effective way to guide the trainer and trainee through the experiences to gain knowledge and capability. Brendan, field engineer for ExxonMobil, has been working with this existing customer on a number of MobileServe planned engineering service projects. John, his contact at the mill, tells Brendan that he'd like them to focus on a problem with reduced viscosity of lubricating oil in the steel mill's main gear drive circulating lubrication system. To help bring solutions and value to his customer, Brendan must be an excellent detective. He uses his mobile serve app to access mobile serve lubricant analysis, as well as sample reports from mobile serve advanced analytics. Brendan hones in on a probable cause and sees an opportunity to involve Integrated Lubricant Service, ILS. His approved MobileServe ILS supplier has a wide set of services, including varnish removal, high-velocity flushing, lubricant reservoir cleaning, and lubrication purification. This video provides one example of these types of purification services. In this case, Brandon thinks he may need a combination of lubrication purification and tank cleaning. After discussing the opportunity with his sales advisor, he discusses the plan with Dean, his mobile serve ILS partner. What they're showing is that there's coking in the system. Now we've seen this before, back in 2011. What's the root cause of the coking issue, do you know? Together, they work to understand the root cause of the as-is situation. They also explore the impacts of any lubrication problems. What's causing, so, how's it causing problems down on the assembly line? so they can later use this information to show how their findings and recommendations can reduce these impacts and produce value for the customer. Then just before their site visit, Brendan goes over his safety preparations, like customer site-specific training. Many locations have, at minimum, a visitor orientation video. He also reads through the Job Safety Analysis, or JSA, to review the risks and determine the best mitigation steps, including personal protective equipment, PPE. He also takes a moment to refresh his awareness of these life-saving rules and how they may apply to his activities that day. He will isolate energized systems, protect himself against falls, and maintain visibility of key hazards. Dean does a preliminary walk around outside the lube building to evaluate where his treatment truck can park. He notices nearby traffic and this drainage ditch. What environmental impact could that have? He needs to prepare a safe and environmentally friendly hookup between the lube building and the flushing and purification equipment in the truck. Foot traffic nearby is another safety consideration to evaluate. In preparation for their site visit, Brendan and Dean meet with their main customer contact, John, to go over their preliminary findings and their plan of action. They begin with the review of safety procedures. The lockout tagout procedures, we're going to be following yours. Correct. Uh, now, we've got red locks. Is that okay for what you're looking for? That's correct, as long as every employee has their own lock and their own tag. And they're all labeled with names on there, so we're good there. They review PPE. We've got hard hat, safety, metatarsal boots, FRs, long sleeves. Any other safety requirements that you're thinking of at this point in time? The list of PPE includes safety goggles, earplugs, gloves, and an atmospheric monitoring device. Dean also tells John about what he saw in his preliminary walk around. We notice that where we're at, there's a few culverts that we want to make sure that we keep an eye on to make sure we don't get any oil in the culverts. Dean also discusses proper required permitting for a potential confined space entry in case any mobile serve ILS staff need to enter the lubricant reservoir for cleaning. Remember, Exxon Mobile lubrication personnel should not enter confined spaces. Brendan and Dean go over the action plan for the coming mobile serve ILS project. First, empty the lube tank by pumping the oil into the mobile reclamation truck, where it will be cleaned. While the tank is empty, they will remove any coking off the heating tubes and clean the tank. 
Brendan will determine the appropriate higher viscosity lubricant to be added to the cleaned oil to bring its viscosity back up to normal. To make this determination, he'll use his MobileServe engineering calculator tool, MobileServe lubricant analysis, and potentially MobileServe advanced analytic test results. The lab results show that the other lubricant properties are still in satisfactory condition, so the oil purification and viscosity blending should bring the lubricant back to an acceptable condition. Finally, Brendan and Dean assure John that they will suggest new actions to bring further value to this customer. Maybe take a look at some changes if we see some changes that we might recommend that you take on the heater, or like you were saying, on the wattage or, or things of that nature. So we'll come up with ideas as well that, that you can consider going forward. Excellent. Sounds like a plan to me. All right. Appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank you, John. John. Thank you. Inside the Lube Building, Dean first takes down data about access and safety considerations as he completes his JSA. He considers how best to conduct lockout tagout for zero energy potential. Also, he reviews confined space entry for his mobile serve ILS personnel. He goes on to assess where the hoses might go from the reservoir to do the purification work. Earlier, as part of the preparation, the team inserted this sludge judge to see what kind of deposits they would find at the bottom of the reservoir. This would help them determine what kind of purification they need to do, how dirty the system really is. Notice his safety goggles, earplugs, fire-resistant suit, gloves, and atmospheric monitoring device. This pre-job discussion is to make sure that everyone understands the root problem and the best course of action for the investigation and oil purification. Besides Dean and Brendan, the team includes the distributor, who is a key partner, now the purification work has started. As they pump out the reservoir, workers can finally see the suspected coking on the heating tube. The heat buildup in the immersion electric heater is carboning the oil, creating that carbon deposit you see. It looks like they're using too high of a watt density heater for this application. The heater is actually not taking advantage of the entire length of the sheath. So in fact, they could use a lower watt heater to achieve the same heating. When the oil cooks at this level of heat, the lubricant cracks into lower molecular elements, reducing its viscosity. Brendan and Dean will tie this information together in their report to John. The base case for doing this lubricant purification and tank cleaning was that the viscosity of the lube oil was dropping. This clear evidence of coking points to the root cause, the high watt density of the heater. Meanwhile, the lube oil from the reservoir is pumped out to the mobile reclamation truck for cleaning. Inside the truck, the oil cycles through a multi-step cleaning process that the operator monitors closely. After filtering, the oil is heated before going into a centrifuge for separation of particulate contaminants and high-level water contamination. Then more filtering before going through a vacuum dehydrator for further water removal. The cycle ends with finishing polishing filters. The operator is guided throughout by a standard operating procedure to make sure that he follows all the necessary steps and that the job is done correctly. Back in the lube building, the reservoir has been drained. It's time to go in to inspect and clean it. Brendan and the other members of the team look on as the crew prepares. They're taking the utmost safety precautions and following appropriate confined space and lockout tagout permitting procedures. This hoist lowers the worker into the reservoir and can also serve to rescue him should he become overcome in the confined space. They have atmospheric monitors to make sure the air is safe, and of course, they'll give the worker frequent breaks to prevent heat exhaustion. Once the lube reservoir is clean, it's time to return the oil from the mobile reclamation truck with added higher viscosity lubricant. The operator takes samples to make sure that the oil is clean and brought back to the required viscosity and cleanliness. He uses this portable particle counter and viscometer. What you have seen in the story of MobileServe integrated lube services are examples of what really differentiates ExxonMobil and its MobileServe partners. They work together to plan for safety and environmental care. By following the steps of a standard operating procedure, they make sure to have good controls on the system. They make sure that everyone involved is well-trained 
and knows how to do a good job and a safe job. At the end of the day, Brendan and Dean meet again with John. Everything go well, uh, no safety issues, concerns? The project went well, and we're really just looking to share some of our findings with you. Brendan reports that they found coking on half of the sheath of the heating element in the lube reservoir. This suggests, he says, that the heating elements may not have optimal length. Larger ones might maintain the required lube temperature without such spot overheating. The team works with a customer to understand why the shorter heaters were used and how to see how to avoid this in the future. Dean adds that his team removed some debris from the tanks, cleaned the oil from the reservoir, and got the lubricant cleanliness numbers back to acceptable specs. Brendan tells John that he will combine his findings, including measurements and photos, to prepare a MobileServe engineering service report for John and his supervisors. He must take in all the facts and sequence of events to determine potential root causes of any problems he finds. He must work with his customer in cooperation, not only to gather the information, but to form the recommendations that will produce an excellent return on investment and value to his customer. Brendan and his sales advisor will use this report to promote our value to other key contacts at this customer. In addition to helping this customer in this one application, Brendan and Dean will look to see how they can help the customer apply what they have learned to other similar situations at this facility or across their entire company. If very well received, this engineering service report could become the foundation of a proof of performance from this customer that could be used to show other customers to convince them that ExxonMobil and its distributors are the right lubricant supplier for them. By using the standard operating procedure as a guide, as well as the other tools described, Brendan can consistently conduct these services and deliver outstanding value to his customer.